Hello and good morning. We're here to talk about the book, Art of Returning to Love, How to Show Fear and Stress the Exit and Heal. So I have two of my favorite things here. I have a cup of tea <laughs> and books and tea are two of my favorite things. I have other favorite things, but since that's what we're here to do. Um, and so if you've missed any of the other um, conversations about this book, feel free to go back and listen to those recordings on this page. And also feel free to grab the book for free as a PDF. The links are in the comments or the description box. And then there's also a link to the Amazon page if you don't like to read a PDF. So, um, and we're right now, we're, I'm going to try to make this brief because what, what I wanted to highlight in our time together today is this idea, like sometimes when we talk about returning to love and, and the, you know, we, I've mentioned before that light permeates the entire universe, like every particle and wave of life force is light. And, and, it, and that light carries the essence of love. This is the yin yang, alpha omega, masculine, feminine dance that we get to enjoy on a planet of polarity such as Earth. And our work is to find harmony between those two seemingly opposite energies but constantly um, seeking balance with one another if you will so uh, we know that the masculine there you know just in terms of um, dominance energetically the, there's been a masculine dominance some people refer to that as the patriarchy and that the energy the feminine energy is coming forward not to dominate the masculine but to be in harmony with the masculine so this is happening for each of us on the individual level as well as the collective level and you know just to give some sort of backstory as context as far as i understand it, and i've been studying this for probably 40 42 years now i find this topic imperative for me to understand the the things that unfold you know, especially currently, right? So there's always things unfolding, but we seem to be at a fever pitch now, although there's plenty of points in history in which, you know, humanity would have said the same thing. There's a different quality to this fever pitch. So, uh, and, they, and they call it a shift of the ages. So the, the backstory is that for, so pl Earth is a place where when a soul chooses to incarnate here, um, it is for the purpose of the treasure hunt through the maze uh, to to find the, the treasure that is the inner knowing, the inner activation and the lighting up from, from every cell of our being that we are actually the, the expression of the source of life, which is this combination of light and love. And that when we when we find that treasure, our job is simply to stay in in constant um, alignment with that so that all that we do comes from that expression comes from that essence if you will and most we're all being if if you're here if you're you know having a, a relationship with higher consciousness then you know that this is your work right like this is the the job of every human being who is aware to to devote the rest of our lives to day in and day out to returning to, to this this center point of love, if you will. And we're not talking about, um, you know, like a romantic fantasy love. You know, when, when the word love is uttered, most people think romance and, you know, maybe some people think about the love they have for their child or their pet or, you know, that kind of thing. But usually that word is associated with, you know, like a romantic kind of thing. and. That's actually um, not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, you know, not talking about the sentimental elements of love that a human being feels. It, it includes that, but it isn't limited to that. I'm, I'm talking about the dynamic presence of life force that's beating your heart and pumping your blood right now, and and more is always within reach. So if we think about the fact that every particle and wave, that which we see and that which we don't see, more of particle we see. We don't see more of the particle particles and waves of life than than what we do see. So that which what we you know the stuff we see the, the denser particles of life that we can actually see with our naked eye is far less in amount than the, the part we don't see. So where was I going with that? 
uh, oh, is that if every particle and wave is this essence of light and love, it renders the entire universe friendly and benevolent and on your side. There's, you know, a, a woman has written a book called The Universe Has Your Back. Albert Einstein talked about the most important decision one would make in a life is to decide whether the universe is benevolent, benevolent or not. And I would encourage you to consider that there is no such thing as anything other than a benevolent universe. Our human mind can certainly make up uh, any, any number of um, uh, stories that, that the universe isn't benevolent and then find lots of evidence to support that. But that doesn't mean that's the whole truth. I'm you know, kind of fond of saying that. So. Um, and so life herself, lot, every aspect of nature is this essence of light and love. Our job is to train ourselves to see it. So in, in the book, The Art of Returning to Love, there is a exercise. There's also a resource page and the link is at the end of the book where there's an, a guided audio for this. So let me just give you, let me tell you why I'm telling you that because Right now, I am. I have built this muscle, so it's not something that I could do in the beginning of practicing this. But right now, I am speaking with you, and I am also envisioning a waterfall of this light from the central core of creation that's like a sparkly, translucent, a white, golden light that is always pouring in through the top of our head and filling our central column and then and our heart center and then spilling out to fill all the other energy, all the cells of our being, if you will. And, and when we get good at this, we, this energy also is, is so, um, uh, for, it's so much, it's replete, that it actually spills out and fills the area around us. This is how we, this is like the atmosphere around us. This is our field. This is how we actually affect the the affect life around us for good by being a vessel and being an open door, if you will, for this light force, this life force, which carries love with it to, um, to pour into us and then affect the world around us. There, I would, I would have you consider that there really is nothing more important than this because, and you might think, oh, but I, I don't have time, I'm, I'm a busy person, I've got all these things, I've got lots of balls, and all that's true, I get it. You know, that, that's always the first sort of like objection to get over, if you will. What I can tell you is that if you're, if you're willing to spend some regular moments throughout the day just accessing this in yourself and playing with it and, and, and trusting that it will show up for you with with your willingness to not give up on it that that was my experience anyway and it tends to be the experience of those around me that i'm you know that I, i'm on this journey with it's not like we flip a switch and it's right there but then and then the requesting from your own heart help me know what it feels like to feel the love of this light force right like that was a kind of a demand i had like how okay I, I, I can kind of intellectually get on board with the fact that there is this energy, this light, life force, but I need to feel it. And so that was a request I made for a long time until I did feel it. And I'm inviting you to consider doing the same thing because then there's this embodied sense of the energy that is far greater in in in, in terms of how you feel it, then what your mind would convince you otherwise. And that's an important thing here because until you feel it in an embodied way, until you feel that potency in you, your mind will continue to run the show, which will always be telling you that there's no such thing. This is, you know, malarkey. Um, why waste your time? You've got all these other things to do and continually... The mind's, you know, one of its distraction mechanisms is continually to direct you outward instead of inward. All the goods are inward, you know, Every, all, the, all that treasure that we hunt <laughs> when we come and have this experience as a physical being, as a spiritual being in a physical body on, on earth, um, the, the treasure hunt really lies in our own 
uh, inner world, right? It's they, they, how do they say the journey from our head to our heart is the longest journey we'll ever take. And look at how short that space is, right? <laughs> we take much longer journeys, you know, from coast to coast and, you know, flying across oceans to have journeys in other, um, on other lands. And, and yet we're so afraid of this journey. And I'm inviting you to consider that it's the journey to be least afraid of. It, it doesn't always feel that way because, you know, we're starting right here where our mind is and our mind can throw out all kinds of possible um, landmines of fear, if you will. But I, what, one of the things, sorry, something just fell outside. One of the things that I encourage you to get the book for is because it's important to remind yourself of these concepts over and over and you know because we learn by repetition so that you don't um so that you don't forget really because when we forget we just turn back to our old habits and and then we think oh this doesn't work and you know it's too hard and and it, it isn't easy i i will say it, it does take some um willingness to be tenacious on our part but I can say that it's harder to not do it because then we're just in that in that whirlpool of constantly churning fear and stress, which gets us nowhere. And it's really hard to be in life in that whirlpool. Right. So it's actually to me, this is my personal experience. It's actually way easier to do the work and just sort of buckle up and do it anyway than it is to not. So the book will help you to just turn to a page or earmark and tag or tab some of the pages that you know really resonated for you i've mentioned this before but highlighting lines or paragraphs or whatever that just jump out and resonate to your heart and then rewriting them on in your journal for example the act of just writing them will will actually help it get embedded in your being right and then reading them um regularly day in and day out until it, you almost have them know them by heart then you own them then it's embodied and it's not just a physical con you know concept because all the while that you're reminding yourself of these it's also entering you entering your cells right it's coming in on the cellular level and at the same time it's coming in it's activating the intelligence that's already in your cells but we have to be engaged at a high level with this we can't we can't just you know, read a page and then expect it to sort of just lay out a red carpet for us. It, it, we have to read it. Um, again, write it down if that's something that you're up for uh, and re, re, read it on, the, you know, regularly and, and feel it seeping into you so that it's a truth that becomes something that you trust and know. So, um, you know, I, I can tell you that there are so many people and usually this happens when our back is against the wall and we've tried everything and we don't know what else to do or where else to turn because it feels like we have tried everything that we're willing to give this a shot, <laughs> if you will, even though this is, should be our first stop, but it doesn't seem to work out that way in a human life. Um, but then we're willing to give it a shot. And then the, the, the people, you know, the, the people that I journey with, you know, like in the Sacred Health Academy, for example, they get it. There's a point where something shifts and it's like, oh, this is a true thing. This, this is a life force. This is an energy that is real, palpable, something I can feel from the inside, something I can uh, have faith in to, to be there every time I turn to it. That's like a given, by the way. I mean, we think that the sacred has has deserted us but that's so not true it's us that has turned away from the sacred and so our our um and so let me let me bring this around here and and, and um come to a close which is when we keep turning to it and when we keep bringing that which is not working in our life every little part of every little part of our life that isn't working one little moment at a time and how do we know what to bring when we're present to something not working that's the time to bring it to the feet of love so what i what i did for a long time is i would literally in my mind's eye i would put it the thing whatever the thing was it could be something i was struggling with emotionally it could be something i was you know that had friction in in 
in a relationship, everything that just didn't feel, that made me feel uh, um, tight or contracted or tense um, or stressed, right? I would put it on a platter. I would ask light to, to wash over it. And I, and I would literally talk to my higher self and say, here's this thing. I, I'm not quite sure what to do. I don't know where to step next. I'm, I don't know how to handle it. Can you help me? And I can tell you that every single time that I did that, I received the guidance, the help, the wisdom to, to know what to do and how to, how to untangle the energy. And, um, and, oh, the other thing I would say, is, okay, here's the thing. I wash it with light. Please transform this energy. Help me transform this energy and then serve it back to me as a higher form of energy that is, you know, from love. And so then that that's the juicy part, because then as that energy transformed, and it's not like it happened in that very moment, but it would happen, you know, sometimes in a very short order, sometimes it take took it would take a little bit longer because there were more layers to it than I realized. But I would always feel, and I still do, I don't mean to say this is all past tense, but uh, I would always feel this grace that would wash over and a and then the energy would be different and it would be a more loving form of energy the essence of love that we started out talking about this is what it means to return to love each one of us that's our only job if we can't necessarily one person can't fix the whole world but we can tend to this day in and day out whatever comes up returning it to love being shown and guided from our higher self, our higher presence, what else might need to be, happen or take place or any sort of anything that needs to happen in reference to that piece will be shown to you when we ask from a heartfelt place. Now, I, that, that whole, like, it was a serving platter that I, would, that I would envision in my mind's eye with the thing on it and I would serve it up and I would ask the light to, to wash over it, transform the energy and then feed it back to me in a higher serving, serving more serving form of, that is love. I don't necessarily do it that way anymore because I like to do it in my heart center now. So whatever the thing that comes up, whenever I feel an, an angst or a, a trigger or a charge or, a, you know, my energy is twisted, I take a breath and you will get better at this. It will, you can do this with more efficiency over time, but you have to start somewhere. You have to start wherever you are. Where do you start? You start exactly where you are. Whatever comes up for you that feels charged and triggered and twisted and contracted, that's it. That's the piece for you right then and there. And the more we do that, the more we clean up our energy, the more we return life's energy to love, because we're just borrowing energy from life right now, having this life force, having this life. It's not our energy. It's life's energy. Uh, so when we return each day, do do the best you can with what you have to work with. You'll get better day in and day out over time so that instantly you can just go, oh, there's a piece right there. Now I just am constantly having this waterfall of light. I bring it, I bring it to my heart. I bring the peace into my heart. And here's why I do that, because I want that peace, that abandoned, darker, denser part of myself that has been abandoned if if it, it you know i want to return that part of myself to love um i i want to do it in my heart center because i it's almost like i want to give it a hug i want to welcome it i want to accept it i want to allow it to be part of the love that overflows from my heart and your heart and all hearts um, especially as we work you know that muscle create a bellows you know increasing the the flame of love in our heart so to speak so I, I don't want it to be outside of me is my point. So you, it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes I do revert back to the serving platter, but uh, uh, you know, you can do it any way you want. Sometimes um, in the past when I've been working with people, you know, cleaning out some energy and old, you know, cords and that kind of thing that, that is no longer serving for them. I will actually envision that I'm, I have a little hole dug in mother earth and I put the energy in there. And then when we're complete, I, put the dirt back over it and I asked Mother Earth to transform the energy because she's really good at that. Her superpower, Mother Earth's superpower is transforming energy from that which is no longer serving to that which is serving. And it will always be a form of love because the whole, you know, Mother Earth is, is um, ha has channels in her, just like we have our acupuncture channels that's filled with 
uh, a crystalline light and love. So whenever we connect into her, this, uh, uh, this imagery is also in the book. When, whenever we connect into Mother Earth, just like a tree roots and, and, and has roots and grounds itself into Mother Earth, uh, and then when we draw her energy back up, it always includes love. So, uh, so she's really good at that. So those are three ways that you can transform energy. And your job is just to start where you are. If it feels a little overwhelming, then ask your higher self to make it more graceful and easeful for you. I mean, you know, it's not like transforming energy is, a, is, a, is like eating a piece of cake. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that graceful and easeful. But it doesn't have to be rife with suffering. That's really it. You know, we don't have to twist ourselves up in painful suffering ways. We, we just have to be present with the energy, be willing to turn to the energy, give it some acceptance and return the energy to love and ask, ask for what we want. Ask for every piece of, every element that you would like to be included in this work for yourself. The, the reason I say it this way is because I, I realized early on, okay, if this is going to kind of be an ongoing thing, then I need to figure out how to make it doable, um, graceful. Uh, I have to do it in a way that I'm willing and inspired to do it. Otherwise, I won't want to do that, right? So that is my um, my piece for the day. <laughs> and you know what? I forgot to introduce myself. I, I In case we haven't met, I'm Lori Nurse, a 30-year practitioner of Chinese medicine and the director of the Sacred Health Academy where we teach women who want to get her health back, usually in the second half of her life or looking towards the second half of her life where health starts kind of doing some wacky things and um, she's tried everything and she knows she has to include her sacred self on the journey, um, but she doesn't quite know how to do that. So we have a whole beautiful online educational and community uh, journey for a woman to take at her own pace um, because what we know is everyone wants to live with a calm mind with energy and vitality in our body and peace in our hearts. So um, go grab the book, start, you know, flipping through the pages, highlighting what resonates, and I will see you next week.